everyone. It's time to talk nutrition on your favorite nutrition show. I'm your host, Josie Perry. On the show today, highlights on the first 1,000 Most Critical Days program, or MCDP2. The Presentation Sisters in Kaoma, preaching a new gospel. And a tip on how you can enjoy the Mahawa fruit on today's recipe. Stay tuned. Trucks, trucks, and more trucks. That's almost all one can see in Kazungola, a budding yet animated border town in southern Zambia. Four countries, Zambia, Namibia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe, rub shoulders here, their borders meeting at the banks of the Zambezi River. Money, goods, and services quickly exchange hands here as people carve a livelihood. As life would have it, some earn enough to meet their needs, while others don't. George Kangwa lives and works in Kazungula. As a nutrition technologist, he knows the lives of Kazungula residents well, more especially their nutrition status. The uh, district is quite vast, it's quite wide, so depending on the specific area, you'd have different challenges. Around here, maybe at the border, it's a bit easier for people to access maybe shops and maybe be able to purchase some food, also to make some money. So the nutritional status here is a bit good. That would be similar to communities like Sons of Thunder, where they have supporting donors there. So their nutritional status there will also be okay. But we have areas that are remote, like Ngwezi, Momba, places like Sikaunze, where for them to get to the road, it's, a, it's, a, it's difficult. So their main source of food is their own agriculture. But uh, as you saw last year, we didn't have a lot of rainfall, so the crops died. If you had to take a drive around the district, you'll find that most of the maize fields didn't really give out any fruit. So the nutritional situation there now is very bad. Looking at mothers trying to struggle to provide for a family, maybe she's got 10 children and she can't manage to feed all those. So you find in such areas we have higher cases of malnutrition. To mitigate the prevalence of malnutrition in children, Sikaunswe clinic staff within Kazungula have come up with an innovative approach supported by Environment Africa, an international NGO. Yes, they are dispensing nutrition through a garden owned by the clinic and tended to by mothers with malnourished children. Jipego Ngandu oversees the activities in the garden. This is the garden for the clinic, which was formed by the Environment Africa to help out the minority children. So this is the whole garden that you can see where the gardening is being done by the mothers who have uh, uh, their children minority under five. For this garden, we have about 15 mothers and others are located in various places where we also have the garden which um, helps out minority and the minority children. And we are trying to help out such children by providing the vegetables and all the nutrients that they would need when they are still young. The boho itself, is, uh, it was given by the environmental Africa, the people that are supporting uh, smart climate change agriculture. So we have this garden to help out the minority children. And from the time we, we, we capture those children during the under five, we had their, um, you know, a growth monitoring and we record their weight every month and we are able to see that this one is under my knowledge, this one is not under my knowledge and we had to list down those that are under my knowledge. Then we expose them to this kind of arrangement. We have seen that this program has helped the children. Actually, we have children that have graduated from this program and we have to enroll others to help out them also uh, reach at a weight that we is recommended for a children to have. Sally Sikute, a mother of three, has received direct help from the garden. Her daughter once had malnutrition, and Sally now tells her story. Poja. Poja, 
tutalike kubireka ku garden bonda katalika kubireka mu garden moya twakali machi shu moya mu garden chishu twakalima twali kuno kuno abana chishu twali kuno twisha kuti katuno jikira abana desu but i apoja katuki mukuhola beyond the clinic garden the staff have gone an extra mile to ensure that residents are self-sufficient in food production and are linking them up for training in conservation farming. So kuya kumonze twakaiya mokupangwa ma garden, twakaiya mokuliminwa mapopwe ambo tukonza kwa shanga kai chino shindini climate change imvula taichiwi kabotu. So twakaishigwa kuti twede kupanga koma bezinzi kutitushange kawo tumapo kambo kuti mabezi mwapanga mwashanga mya mamenda na hula yawa menda alako ya kukala chindi jilamfu clearly sikaunzo's clinic garden initiative is set to improve nutrition in kasungola perhaps other facilities in zambia can take a leaf from it and begin dispensing nutrition that way they'll be on the right track earlier program we looked at how the first 1000 most critical days program aimed at reducing stunting in children fared the program is now in phase 2 or MCDP 2 as it is known in the nutrition circles Freddy Mobanga is from the National Food and Nutrition Commission he coordinates this mammoth program and he is here to tell us all that he can about it Freddy welcome to the show Thank you, Josie, and how are you? I'm fine. It's good to see you. My pleasure. Right. The last time we talked about the MCDP-1 and how the program fared. Very quickly, remind us what this program was all about. The first 1,000 most critical days is a program that is uh, designed to reduce stunting. Stunting is a form of uh, undernutrition, uh, which affects mainly children under five years and now the first 1000 most critical days is the window of opportunity in which we can intervene right now we are now going from uh, the first phase of the program to the next phase of the program but before we delve into that what were the take-home lessons from phase one yeah, um, as you're aware, Josie, in phase one, we mainly worked in 14 districts, rural districts, as pilot phase. And uh, we learned quite a lot in terms of testing what would work to help us reduce stunting. And uh, we are grateful for that we have quite a number of lessons that we have uh, built on into the MCDP2. Uh, for example, one of the core things of scaling up nutrition is to have a common space for different players to come together and you know, look at this problem holistically and, bringing, and allowing each one of us what they can bring on the table to resolve the problem. So um, we also learned quite a lot in terms of what works as regards nutrition interventions. As you are aware, this is a multi-sectoral action. We are looking at addressing the different um, causes of stunting or undernutrition. We are looking at issues of food insecurity in the household. We are looking at uh, poor child caring practices. We are looking at you know, inequality or you know, low status given to women. Because in, in nutrition, we believe women are so key in addressing this problem. Then we are also looking at how do we ensure that we attend to issues of poor environment that affects, you know, rather that can contribute to diseases that can affect children from getting malnourished. And we are also looking at now the aspects of how do we ensure that the good knowledge that we have from NFNC is passed on to the general public. That seems like uh, quite a lot, and I do hope that we have enough time to um, implement all this in the given program. Yeah. Um, what we have, what we have uh, learned is that it's possible we can work together. It's possible we can actually reduce the stunting. 
as we have seen uh, in the last five years, we've made quite good progress, reducing stunting from 40 to about 35 now. This is a good indication. Our target, we are saying by 2025, we should be able to actually come to about 25%. So what will that mean? It means that the different stakeholders need to pull up their socks and do the things right as we've done. Uh, that is in terms of reaching the target population. Uh, we are hoping to reach at least 80%. And uh, government has also directed that we have to cover all the districts in the country rather than only focusing on 30. And we are also saying let's improve on the quality of these interventions, uh, either from the uh, nutrition specific, which are more implemented through the health systems, or the nutrition sensitive, uh, nutrition -sensitive interventions through the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Education, and Water and Sanitation. Now let's look at the mix of um, your stakeholders. Who's helping you this time round? We are grateful that um, in phase two, we have quite a number of partners that have come to assist government, uh, notably the uh, DFID, the UK government, the USID government, uh, the German government, and also the European Union. And we also have other um, uh, NGOs, international and local, that have also uh, come in to help government roll out this first 1,000 most critical days program. And what would their specific roles be this time around? In the Scaling Up Nutrition, we have several networks. Uh, we have the what we call the donor network. This is where now the cooperating partners meet together to mobilize support to help government accelerate or scale up the first 1,000 most critical days program. And we are also saying, can we bring in on board the Scaling Up Nutrition Business Network? The private sector have a role to play. For example, uh, we are talking of how do we facilitate households to grow different foods. Private sector can come in. How do we ensure that we add value to the, pro to the products that we produce? They can make different kinds of foods that can help you know, to reduce or to increase the consumption of diverse foods. So we are also looking at uh, the other players like the civil society. Mm -hmm. The civil society have a role to play to advocate, one, to government to improve on the, you know, resource allocation. We are also saying they can also advocate for to the general population that they uptake the interventions that we are promoting through the first 1,000 most critical days. Mm. Now, at the end of the day, uh, all these interventions meet in the family. Mm -hmm. So what direct benefit is the family going to have? Yeah. In fact, that's one of the major lessons from MCDP1. We are saying, if at all, all these interventions from health, from agriculture, from fisheries, from water and sanitation, all these services converge in the household, then it's likely that the impact in reducing starting will be very high. I think this has been demonstrated globally and also even here in Zambia. So that's the focus now in phase two, is to ensure that these services converge in the intended households. Now, not to look a gift horse in the mouth, there's sometimes, we, we have this attitude as uh, citizens, when there's something good for us, we sit back and say, oh yeah, we'll wait for things to happen. But is there any specific role that uh, households should play? Exactly, because most of the um, actions to reduce uh, undernutrition or stunting are better placed in the households. Because it's the household um, family members that will, first of all, demand for these services that we are promoting. And two, to put into practice what they are learning or what they have been taught is the household. To provide the resources that are required, e.g. for caring, it is the household. You know, so the household is the center of action for this scaling up nutrition. And that's why we are even saying in phase two, the focus should be that we target most of the resources towards actions that will propel the households to act. That is very, very, very interesting. And I do hope that uh, 
we make the specific impacts that you are looking out for. We'd like to thank you for coming on to the show, and uh, we'll make a, a follow-up. Thank you, Josie. On one of my tours of duty in this beautiful country, I found myself in Kaoma in the Western Province, and there I met Sister Bella Mutu from the Order of the Presentation Sisters. Now, these sisters are preaching a new and life-giving gospel in the name of integrated farming and conservation farming. Here's Sister Bella. I'm Sister Bella Vedamuthu. I'm from India, but I came to Zambia in 1986. So I've been here for the past 33 years. I'm a presentation sister. Uh, we are an Irish congregation and we are spread all over Zambia. Uh, this is one of our mission. So we have a school and this is another uh, project we have. So this this was initiated or inspired by our desire to conserve, do conserva conservation farming and also to integrate farming. And knowing that uh, people from here are subsistent farmers, they, we said it's good to teach them conservation or integration, integrated farming so that they don't use more fertilizers. We do cater for about 2,000 people and people in Kaoma and all the surrounding villages. They do come here to learn conservation farming and make compost making and how to do integrated farming. That is how to raise animals, look after chickens and how to use those manure for farming. You know, to use every resource more profitably you use what you get from one thing and then use it for another thing so that we really make the best use of our resources. That is why we started integrated farming. So when you have a land, like subsistence farming, when you have a land, then you raise few chickens, you raise, you know, you have few cows, you have uh, goats, then collect those manure to produce cobar gas because you don't have to be looking, cutting down the trees and making charcoal for burning. So if you have, since you have the cow dung, you can make the cobalt gas and use the gas and also use the same, you know, uh, waste product as manure for farming. So we are also asking for rotation of crops. We are teaching them rotation of crops because of the uncertain rainfall. If you are depending only on maize, every year it is not, you know, we are not sure that we are going to get enough crops. So we are teaching them how to do crop rotation, say like sorghum, millet, cassava, and uh, maize, all this, you know, rotate and groundnuts, and how to make some, you know, quite nutritious food with all these different products, rather than just depending on one uh, food that is maize. We really deal more with women, because women are the ones who really do the real farming, every day taking care of the family. So mostly women, like we also give loan fund to say rare chickens and uh, rare uh, goats, and then make compost making. So this is especially for women. They have received it well. They are using, making use of it. Like if you really go around like Kabanga, um, like you know, we have trained some of the people and they in turn go and train the others. And they have really started some of these initiatives and shown others how things can be done. See, it is very difficult to change the traditional idea of using fertilizers and um, you know, integrated farming is something new. It takes time. So I would say like most of the women who have been here, they would say like they have, they have really learned a lot and they are using it.
Mahuahua is one of the seasonal fruits in Zambia. On our recipe today, we'll learn how you can use it to make rice meal porridge. And on that note, we come to the end of today's show. Be sure to join me on another edition of Putting Nutrition First in Zambia. For the entire production crew, I'm Josie Piri saying adios. Yeah.